ONDC, the Open Network for Digital Commerce. We've all heard about it and how it's going to revolutionize e-commerce and online shopping. It's an initiative that was started by the government of India, the same people who came up with UPI. And a lot of people say that ONDC is going to do to e-commerce what UPI did to payments. But how does it work? But before we can talk about how it works, let's talk about what it's not. ONDC is not a website or an app. It's not a government organization. It's not even a, a tech platform or, or an enabler for technology. What it is, is it's an open network and it eliminates the need for a central intermediary. Today's platform-centric e-commerce model means buyers must connect with sellers on each marketplace and follow their rules. Giants like Amazon and Flipkart control an incredible 60% of the Indian e-commerce market, giving them pricing power over sellers. With 14 crore e-retail e shoppers in 2020, India has the third largest online shopper base globally, behind only the US and China. And this number is expected to grow significantly with the addition of 37 crore Gen Z consumers by 2030. The gross merchandising value for digital commerce in, re in the retail market in India was just 2.85 black crores in 2020. This is only 4.3% of the total retail GMB in India, which is well below retail penetration in countries like China, South Korea, and the UK. But there's some great news. By 2016, digital commerce in the retail sector in India is expected to grow both in terms of users and in terms of value exponentially to 15 lakh crores. Now that's where ONDC comes in to enable this growing user base and transaction volume while making it a more level playing field for all sellers and buyers. In an open network, buyers and sellers can transact no matter what platform or application they use to become digitally visible. Now let's take a look at a typical user journey. In this case, the user is on the phone pay app and a user is going to now search for a product. In this particular case, the user is searching for chicken. So they'll type this search into the box and they'll get the result back. What's happening behind the scenes is the buyer application is actually communicating the search results to the seller application, which then returns some results, which you can now see on the screen. The user can then continue to use the buyer application to actually make their selection. So now they've added a particular product to their cart. And what's amazing is the fulfillment as well can happen on this network. So the buyer has a choice of who they want to, to get the product delivered with. In this case, the buyer go, goes ahead and chooses their fulfillment partner. And the information is communicated what to the seller does, is it using the, the seller application of the supply chain. So even a small seller could plug in to some of the best logistic providers in the world and provide the same level of quality service that anyone could. So now that our user has finally placed his order, you can see that he also gets updates as the order is fulfilled, all through the same buyer application that the user chooses to use. And he's able to connect to different sellers, work with different delivery partners, all through the ONDC network. Now that you understand how this works in practice, Let's take a closer look at some of the components behind the network. The open protocol provides a standardized way for buyer applications and seller applications to communicate that works across industries. The ONDC network at the center of this diagram comprises of network participants who join ONDC as either buyer side apps, seller side apps, or as a gateway. And they come together to form the open network. On the right side of the diagram, you see the box with the network services. And this is a set of common services 
that are provided through the ONDC infrastructure, um, data that can be extracted from the network and can be processed by other participants. And finally, on the left side of the screen, you see other open networks that can eventually plug into ONDC as the user base develops. And finally, how does the magic all happen? What is this protocol layer? Well, there's several technology components that are built into this protocol layer, specifically the adapter interface, the gateway, and open registries. And I'm not going to get into too much detail, but I'm going to quickly explain what each of them are. The adapter interface is a set of standard APIs that are open source and developed on what's called the Beckon protocol. And these APIs basically define a standard way for participants in the network to exchange information between each other. Every participant on this network has to implement a certain set of these adapter interfaces. The gateway is the application that will ensure that all the sellers on the network are discovered by buyers based on certain parameters such as location, availability, and any other customer preferences. And initially, ONDC is actually going to create a few gateways to, to kick things off. However, in the long term, anything can be customized by anyone. Um, you can come in and create a seller app, a gateway, both a seller and a buyer app. It's totally up to you how you want to use this, this technology stack. And finally, open registries. Uh, and, and that's essentially a list of all the network participants that's maintained by ONDC. So putting these three components together make up the protocol layer, which is what runs the open network. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to this week's episode. Hope you enjoyed learning about ONDC as much as I enjoyed making the video. As Nandan Nilikani says, ONDC is truly an idea whose time has come. It will revolutionize Indian e-commerce. And just like the early days of UPI, startups have a huge opportunity to build a big business by helping buyers and sellers connect to the network.